Hey, if you've been spending a lot of time down here in the business area of things, you could develop what I'll call a fear of heights where we're afraid to explore what's going on up there. This song, Willin' by Little Feet, uh, will help you with that substantially. Watch this, one shape. I'm gonna go through this slowly in just a second. We'll check it out. I'm gonna take that little shape, tenths and twelfth. Again, we'll go through it slowly in a second. I'm gonna drag it down, I'm gonna drag it down, 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 and to a G chord. Okay, just a second here. So add some rhythm. Same shape, just tighten it up a bit. That's the first two lines of the song. If you get that, you got a whole lot of it. Again, this is Willin' by Little Feet. Um, we're gonna play along as well. We're gonna do a slow play along and then a full speed play along toward the end. So stick around for that for sure. I've been getting a lot of great feedback about that. I want to thank you for coming back and subscribing and your comments, suggestions. Hit that thumbs up button and the, what do you call it? The, the subscribe and the little bell thing tells you when new videos come out. Uh, it's been great to talk to a lot of you. Um, so I'll send you, of course, to patreon.com slash guitar regret. I've got a couple of song sheets here for you. There's a ton of stuff up there you can grab. Uh, patreon.com slash guitar at work. Join us there. Grab these sheets. I'll be referring to them. They've got all of, there's two of them. They've got all your chord shapes and all of that that we'll be talking about. I'll be referring to these the whole time. I've got it here on my trusty iPad. So go grab those. Now, Patreon doesn't have to be a lifelong commitment. Um, again, tons and tons of songs up there, and uh, it's the play-alongs that I'm especially, uh, think, I think are especially valuable because a lot of us are not playing with other people, and uh, it really helps to develop your instincts. So let's jump in on this guy here. This is a Willin' Out. I've got, um, you're going to see, see this shape right here. On the bottom, sorry, bottom of page two, you're getting, look at that. That shape right there. Watch out for Roman numerals. If you have not crept up that far or beyond the uh, the open area, Roman numerals indicate where you're heading on the fretboard. So the Roman numeral 10, it's asking you to put your first finger there on the 10th fret of the A string and your pinky's going to the 12th fret of the B string. I suggest pinky, um, if you feel like your pinky doesn't work that way, it might be because your thumb is up. If your thumb is up and over, it really does cripple up your pinky. So try to get your thumb down nice and low like that. A good curl in the pinky is considered good technique. I heard somebody out there call it one time um, Van Halen pinky, when you've got that nice curl in it like that. So that can't be a bad thing. You could use your ring finger, um, but when we get wider down here, you may find that that's a bit of a stretch. So I prefer you grab that pinky, but hey, it's all up to you there. First and pinky, look at that. Uh, that's your first shape. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna introduce the rhythm yet because we got to get this left hand going. Otherwise, your right hand won't know what to do. So that's your first shape. Now I'm gonna call that a G. It doesn't look like the G you know down here. I know that, but it is a form of G. G shape. This guy here is a D slash F sharp. The second shape. Look at that. Roman numeral nine. But don't start from scratch. Don't just take everything off. I'm gonna drag the whole thing back one fret. Drag it back one fret and drag my pinky back an extra fret. So see, we've got a, a tighter shape. Here's the first shape. Ten and twelve. That's your G. This D slash F sharp, I'm gonna drag the whole thing down one fret, just one fret, and then I'm gonna drag the pinky down an extra fret. So that it's the same shape, but it's tightened up a little bit, right? It's tightened up, so we can think of it as wide to narrow. And look at this, this E minor coming your way. That's all, same shape, two frets lower. It's your narrow shape. And now up to a D, that specialty D we'll call it. That's your wide shape again, five and seven. So here's what we have so far. We're gonna go 10, 12 that and if you see my middle finger sneak over once in a while he's not all he's really doing is if I accidentally hit the low E string it'd be a terrible sound so uh, he's he's instinctively in there to protect that string so if you see him bobbing around that's what he's doing 10 and 12 that's your G D slash F sharp drag it back drag that shape perfectly down two frets and then to a large shape again on the fifth fret see it's getting wider down there and I can do that one more time here is G D slash F sharp, E minor, here's a D, down two more frets is a C, and that's all we're going to need, and I'm going to go to a G, regular G, garden variety G. So what can be confusing, uh, th these chords can take on hideous names and they're, they become unmanageable on a chart, like this would be D add 4, D add, D add 9, add 4, D add 11, um, they take on obscene names and you really don't you don't need that really it's um it's more it's really just the riff that we're after so uh, we're calling them for what they are in the root situation this is a g d slash f sharp e minor d c and to your normal g now i'm choosing to play my g this way i call this the big kids g you can play it your old way any old g is going to work in this case uh, you may want to get used to this at some point it can be tricky to grab if it's new to you because we all get so used to the way we play 
something for the first time and we continue to play it that way when you're trying to play the same chord with different fingers it can drive you crazy right so but i really need a couple of fingerings of g so i think if i was you i would sit uh, throw a movie on sit on g just practice getting there ring middle pinky ring middle pinky i've written that written down for you there but you can go to your old g as well no harm done um, now before you how do you practice what we have so far? Before you get to the actual rhythm, which we'll talk about in just a sec, why not just practice skating backwards and forwards? Yeah, and one, uh, one further thing. I'm trying, now you're going to see X's in the chord diagrams, trying not to hit the big fat string. Or the, now the thinnest string, how do you not hit the thinnest string? I'm actually hitting it, it's X'd out, hitting it, but my pinky is leaning over. So if I do hit it, you don't hear it. So you don't want... Works on some of the chords, but not all. So we mute that. It's called. It may be happening uh, unintentionally. So maybe I shouldn't even mention it and uh, get away with it. So here's to backwards, E minor, D. Here's your C. And the song does not do this, but why not practice going up? So if you have that, um, then you can start introducing the rhythm. Because if there's any hesitation in the left hand or any sort of clumsiness as you're learning these, your right hand doesn't know what to do with short circuits. And then it feels like both hands are screwing up, but it's not really the case. So make sure you can get to the, use the dots to your advantage. You notice the 12th fret has two dots on it. You'll see on the side of your guitar and on the, you typically on the neck. Ninth, seventh, fifth, third. Those are those dots are there for is to give you some sort of visual reference. So um, that's good. Now, timing-wise, let's talk. This is the main riff. It's really it's the main riff of the verse, and uh, it's a lot of the song right in there. So if you're going to play it a whole bunch of times during the song, I'm gonna, if we have to round off the rhythm, I'm going to go bass down, chicka chicka. He says bass down, chicka chicka. Bass means the lowest available note in the chord. So that would be, in this case, the A string, second thickest. So bass down, chicka chicka. Next chord, bass down, chicka chicka. There's slight variations here and there on the recording, but you're not going to play it the same way twice. And then bass. When you get to the E minor, the third chord, you leave early to get to the D. So check this out. One, two, three, four. Bass down, chicka chicka. Bass down, down. You're only on that D for one big shot on beat four. So how do you count that? One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three. One. There's your, there's your C. So uh, you're quickly on, on and off the D, okay? So it's going one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one. There's your main riff. Let's do that a couple times slowly together, okay? Three and a four going. One. One more time. Three and a four and a... G. Good. At this point in the song, we're at the end of the second line like of the, uh, of the verse there, or the intro is the same. We're on a G, and now it says punches. It's gonna say C, then D, add four, then do a C. Uh, so that would be this, C. Take a C shape, drag it two frets higher, back down to C, that's a D add four. You can call it other things, by the way, I know that. So the C, drag it up, back to the C, and back to the G. Now it says punches, it's very characteristic in this song. It's almost like a, you could call it a tag almost. They punctuate section, the end of the, end of the section with this riff. So if I'm sitting from the G, Tell you, you arrive on the D add four on an upstroke. Okay, let's do it a couple more times. Three and a four. G. We're at the end of the second line on your sheet there. One. C. Up. Back. Down. Bass. I'm ending it with a bass and then a downstroke on the G. Here is last, last time. Three. C. Should do a G. Let me play the main riff, including that. Here it comes slowly, three and a four going. So D slash F sharp, E minor, quick D, C, G coming. Here's your tag, punch it. Go, let's do 
do that again, okay? Three and a four, G. D slash F sharp. E minor is a D, C, and a G. Punches. Okay, that's your main riff. The rest of it is just strummy. Uh, it's really just strummy. When we get to the chorus, I've been from Tucson. Tucson. Brackets can mean a lot of things on charts. On mine, they typically mean um, two beats a piece. So you're seeing in the middle of the chorus, driven every kind of rig that's ever been made, two beats a piece. It's a little walk of G, A minor seven, G slash B, then do a C. And that is again, those are all in your sheets. That's good. G, A minor seven, G slash B, ever been made. Driven the back roads so I wouldn't get away. Big stop. Uh, now I'll call this the bridge. Hang in there with me. This is the last part. The bridge. Uh, you give me weed, white sand. So those are stops. It says stops there. And on the word weed, you hit one C, weed. Follow the singer, okay, on this. It's it's almost like a conducted kind of a feel uh, where you don't know, you don't want to come in early if you're playing with other people. So I go C, B, G slash B can be a lot of things. I'm playing it this way. Whites, A minor seven, it's just an A minor without a ring finger. And now when you get to this G on the word wine, start strumming to get wine. And you show me the sign. I'll be willing. Here it is here. That little punchy thing is going to show up. Um, now, what you probably need to do at that point is stop tape and work on anything that might be new to you there, and we'll do a slow play along. And I'm just going to do the first page for us uh, up until including the bridge uh, during for the play along. Yeah, I'll bring it down. It comes in at 72 beats per minute, and uh, I'll bring it down to 60 on the fabulous beat buddy here. Let's go down, down, just dial that up on the beat buddy. Hey, and how do I'm using the pop? People are always asking, pop 12 drum pattern. How did I know that? If you go to the Singer Sound website and you go to the Beat Buddy menu, there's a song matching tool and click on that, that'll open up. And then uh, type in the name of the song. Just type in Willen and it showed up. It told me it was 72 beats per minute and it's told me to use the pop 12 uh, pattern, which is installed on your Beat Buddy. You just have to literally dial it in. Um, I love it. Now there are there are stops. There are absolute stops in the song, and the drums stop there. But I'll keep the drums going so, so it'll keep us together. You know how much time has gone by, okay? So um, let's do it that way. And they don't bring the drums in until I think the chorus fully. So, but I'll put them on right from the very beginning again. It'll it'll hold us together. It's this guy here. Three, four, and a one, two. That's at 72 beats a minute. Let me let's do the main riff twice together just to warm up okay before we launch right in here's the main riff one two three four and So again, at 70, just double check that's at 72. No, that was at 60 beats a minute. That felt slow. Uh, we'll do the full, we'll do a play along at 60. Uh, I'll bring that down. That was at 60 beats a minute. That was our slow version, okay? The actual version will be at 72. So that was at 60, so it felt draggy. Um, so let's do all the way to the bottom of the first page there, just uh, till up to including the bridge, the first bridge with the stops. And now the play alongs are especially important um, if you get lost in the middle of this, let's say. Whoa, whoa, Try to meet me maybe on the G uh, on time. That means that's building your instincts and you know where you are when things are going wrong. That's really important. So not to just panic, but try to stay musical and then ooh, meet me on the G. Okay. Um, that, that way you don't have to start over again. And again, you do develop that, that instinct, which is a real time instinct, which I think you can only kind of get by doing it, you know? Um, so I'll get that guy going again. Now the intro goes one time and then we're into, I'll just sort of speak out the lyrics as best I can read them here. And it's going one, two, 
three intro is the same as a main riff. And, uh, first verse, same thing, up you go. I've been warped by, driven by the snow, drunk and dirty, don't you know, and I'm still punches. Up we go again, out on the road, repeat. Out on the road, late at night, my favorite, Alice. Dallas, Alice. The chorus, the one. Been from Tucson to Tucson again. The hatch of Peter Tall and Paul. Here's your walk up G. Every kind of rig that's ever been made. It's gonna go twice. Main riff, main riff. Okay. Bottom of the first page. Big piano solo here. Last tap. One, two, three, four. Stop right there. So to consider that the slow play along, and uh, even um, even that might seem quick if these shapes are new to you, and I imagine they're new to a lot of us. So you may just do it in stop time first, sit right in front of a movie, just practice getting there, boom, boom, visually, where are they? Um, it can be hard to move two fingers the same distance, you know, um, because one wants to go further than the other, or whatever the case may be. So it's just something, just make sure you're not putting too much pressure. And as you move, you release the pressure, but you stay on the string. You shouldn't have to refinger that every time. It's sort of a drag. You drag it down, but you don't hold the pressure on the whole time because that's it. first of all, it's uncomfortable. Second of all, uh, it's not going to sound great. You're going to find. Um, so let's go back up to 72 on the fabulous Beat Buddy, proudly affiliated with Singer to Sound and the Beat Buddy and also the Aerial Slooper. The Beat Buddy is so much fun. It's way more fun than the Metronome. Highly recommend you get it. You'll find the links in the description below. And uh, if you use the promo code GAW10, it'll get you 10% off at checkout. Helps to support the channel. Greatly appreciate it. Again, head to patreon.com slash guitar work. Grab those sheets. It's great. The Aero Slooper is fabulous. Looping, if you're thinking of getting into it, the Aero Slooper is fabulous. And it also talks to the Beat Buddy. Uh, they, you connect them together and they're a wonderful pair. And it's just sort of a band of your own right there on the floor. So go grab those for sure. Um, I'm at 72 beats a minute, gonna go all the way through, and I'm gonna leave the drums in even in the stops. Hey, what could possibly go wrong, right? Let's give it a go. Get, get, get a full run through here. So that's one, two, three. Feeling that full, we're in a one, two. Get ready up here, main riff. One, two, three, once through, here we go. And intro. First verse, same thing. It warped. Drunk and dirty. Don't you know, but I'm still G. With it. Same thing. Up we go. Out on the road. Late at night. In every headlight. G. Alice. Dallas Alice. Okay, now. Chorus C. Been from Tucson. Up we 
go. Same thing. I've been kicked as reverse. Robbed by the sleep. My head's still in. Still on my feet. And I'm still. With it. Up we go again. Smuggle some folks, some folks from New Mexico. They got sun. Every time I go to Mexico. Chorus coming. Second page. In front of some that took on the king. They had your beat a torn apart. Walking in every kind of wig that's ever been made. Live in the back row so we can get away. to worry about the ending <laughs> it's a little bit of a train wreck i find on that it's, it's hard to figure out exactly what's going to be the chords of this the very windy i'll be willing to be moving at the very end there up page two and you'll see ending bracketed it's just a quick g a minor seven g slash b back to a minor seven g again that's g a minor seven g slash b a minor seven it's like a bo 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 but to me, it's, it's, it's kind of messy on the recordings if they were doing it live and it just kind of happened. And uh, it's really cool, but it's, it can be hard to mimic. So you might just do your own thing there. How did you do with all that? Okay, so that, again, the um, play alongs, they're, they're, they're most valuable when you keep right on going. When, unless, you know, unless you know you need to stop tape and get those shapes together, something really fundamental. But the idea is that we play together and you've got to keep up and find, if you find me, if you make a mistake, meet me at the next chorus or the next chord or whatever it's going to be. So I hope it's helped you in that way. And I hope again, that this help, helps you get rid of your fear of heights. If you do have a fear of heights, by heading up the neck, because there's a lot of great stuff that happens. Like songs like Blackbird use that, there's those shapes. There's many, many, many others too. They're called tenths and they're just beautiful. Widely used on guitar. So thanks for coming back, guys, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Hit the thumbs up button. If you sub hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell notification, it tells you when new videos have come. That's all it does. So if you uh, if you don't know, need to go looking, it will tell you. And I'm really glad to have you back. Thank you for the thumbs up. I've met the world here in YouTube. I really appreciate it. I've had so much fun doing this. And let me know what you think of this one. Enjoy it. We'll see you again very, very soon for the next one. Okay? Oh. Two. Three. Ow.